Dean and Tyler Listel are registered investment advisor representatives. Investment advisory services offered through Brokers International Financial Services, LLC, member SIPC. Brokers International Financial Services, LLC, and Secure Retirement Solutions, LLC are not affiliated companies. It's time for Secure Retirement Solutions with your hosts, Dean and Tyler Listel, fully licensed retirement specialists from Secure Retirement Solutions in Green Bay. Now, here are your hosts, Dean and Tyler. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Tyler and I will discuss topics that affect your retirement, such as investments, income planning, social security, and much more. How are you this morning, Tyler? Good morning, Dean. I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Thank you. Uh, Today, we're going to talk about uh, retirement strategies that could backfire on you. Uh, This was originally an article by Motley Fool and uh, looked at it. Very good article, but we're going to expand on it a little bit as to some of the experiences we have in the office uh, when people come in and talk to us about certain things. And and the first uh, one that could backfire on you is um, a thought process more than anything else, and that is playing catch up later in life when it comes to saving money. Um, we hear this quite often, and that is, uh, you know, I've got a lot of expenses when I'm younger. I'm raising the kids. I have to pay off um, cars. I'm accumulating debt because I'm also generating and uh, a good income and so on. But the problem we have here is it's very easy to keep pushing it off. So playing catch up later in life, you typically have to invest significantly more to end up with the same uh, amount in that bucket of money when you retire compared to if you started significantly earlier. We have said in in some of our our shows, our radio shows, that um, You know, one thing that uh, younger people have on their side when it comes to investing is time. And uh, time generates uh, more compounding interest opportunities. So playing catch up later in life is really something that a lot of people do. And in a way, you're sort of incentivized for it because there are 401k catch up uh, opportunities or IRA catch up opportunities. And the reason those opportunities are out there and put in place um, is because so many people do it. But make things easy on yourself. You know, try to put away as much money as you can earlier in life. There's a happy medium. We understand that you're raising a family and incurring debt at that particular time. But but I always tell people, again, if you look at it in a very simplistic way, if you say, okay, uh, out of the money I have, if I take 33% and use that for play, if I use 33% and put away, and if I use 34%, I utilize that for a little bit of both. So, I mean, there there's an opportunity here to look at things, put money away, but also, um, you know, still take advantage of, of buying and accumulating things through your early 20s, 30s, and 40s. Tyler, what else should we look at when we're talking about playing catch up later in life? Yeah, Dean, this, this is a big one here. Um, as you said, the first retirement strategy that can backfire is playing catch up later on in life. And we see it often where Many workers, they put off saving for retirement during their 20s, 30s, and even 40s. And what they'll do during, during that time is they will they might contribute up to the match in their 401k, or they might put aside some money here and there in an IRA or, or a Roth account, which is good. It's better than nothing, but they don't try and work their, work their way up to the recommended 15% of income into your retirement accounts is what we recommend. Um, and if you're not doing that early and often, then you're going to have a harder time down the road to try and catch up. So what they do is they aim to play catch up later on in life when they're in their 50s or 60s before they retire. And later on in life is when they don't have certain things. It it makes sense to them at the time because they don't have things like student loan payments. As we know right now, um, student loans are becoming such an epidemic in our country where um, there's actually companies who, instead of offering a 401k match right away, they offer a matching plan to pay student loans for certain people. So that just goes to show how much uh, student loan uh, loan payments are putting behind some of these young um, workers. They also don't have childcare costs when they're older, so they push it down the road because, again, when you're younger, you're going to have kids, or you might have kids, you're probably going to have higher childcare costs. And you'll also have things like higher mortgage payments, car loans, and other immediate bills when you're younger and kind of building your life, building your family, the last thing that some people think of is funding their retirement, but that's not the not the mindset that you want to have. You want to be able to fund your retirement early and often. And trying to wait like that can really backfire because the longer you do put off building your retirement, the less time you have for your money to grow. 
And the two things that'll help your money grow over time is time and compounding interest. So if you have those things on your side, you can really build up a, a nice retirement nest egg for the time that you do wanna retire. Um, and again, if you're in your 20s, 30s, or 40s, those are two things that you do have. You have that time and compounding interest. But then when you get into your 50s and even into your 60s, you don't really have that anymore. Sure, you'll have compounding interest, but you don't have time on your side to really grow that. So the earlier you begin, the better. You don't want to play catch up. Um, the other thing that many people don't think of is at the time, you know, they think they can push out saving for retirement later on in their 40s, 50s, 60s. But if certain circumstances, if they align against you, then you might also be forced to retire earlier than planned. And that's what many people don't take into consideration because according to a study done by Voya Financial, 60% of Americans are forced to leave the workforce before they're ready due to things like job loss, health issues, having to care for loved ones, different things like that. So right there tells you that if you plan on playing catch up later on in life, chances are likely that it's probably not gonna be on your terms. You're probably not gonna retire on your terms just because over half of people, they don't. They're forced to retire earlier than they planned. So you never wanna um, plan on playing catch up later in life because you might not even be working later on when you're trying to play catch up. Okay, Tyler, you bring up a good point when you talk about people who think they're going to work later in life. Sounds good, but again, we can talk to uh, investors out there. They're in their 40s and 50s and we'll put together a financial plan for them and look at it and say, okay, you know, there's some work that needs to be done here. If you want a comfortable retirement, if you want to maintain your lifestyle based on what you're currently doing now uh, while working, you need to put X amount of dollars away. And right away they'll say, well, you know, you know I'm just gonna work later. Uh, they already give up and think that they're gonna work later. And as Tyler said, uh, many times working later is not under your terms. And if you do work later, many times it's not that career position where you've built a, a substantial amount of salary. Many times it's a part-time job that you pick up that's minimum wage. So we tell people, you know, while you're in control of some of the years that you're going to make the most money possible, which is usually in your 50s, you want to uh, put away as much as you possibly can at that point. Because again, relying on having to work um, after you either lose your career job or semi-retire, you typically do not have the ability to put that much money away. So take control of it. We'd like to see you uh, under all circumstances, try to start earlier if at all possible. Yeah, good point there, Dean. Um, the, the best thing to do obviously is instead of um, wait and, and play catch up later in life, it's build your nest egg up steadily over time when you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, the earlier the better. And a little example that I have here is if you set aside just $300 per month over 40 years in a Roth account. So again, Roth account is the account where you have money that comes from checking your savings, you already pay taxes on it, then it goes into the Roth account and it grows tax free thereafter. So you're not gonna pay any taxes on the money when you take it out in retirement as long as you're over 59 and a half. Um, again, $300 per month over 40 years in that Roth account, that'll leave you with about $719,000 worth of tax-free funds. And that's if your investments generate about a 7% annual rate of return. And if you, if you look back at the history of the overall stock market, the S&P 500 has averaged about a 10% rate of return, but if you discount that for inflation, it's closer to seven to 8%. So again, if you, um, $300 per month over 40 years generating a 7% rate of return, which is doable, could give you seven, just under $720,000, which is a huge chunk, and $300 per month is something that a lot of people can work up to. Um, but again, we recommend starting off early and often if you can work your way up to 15% of household income invested into various retirement accounts, start with your 401k. Um, if you have a match, contribute first and foremost up to that match because that's free money. Then outside of there, fund a Roth account, which is tax free when you, um, when you take the money out and then go back to the 401k. If your company does offer a Roth 401k, you can just go right into that as well. But again, if you can contribute 15% of your income into retirement accounts early, you're gonna be set um, playing catch up later in life. That's definitely a, a, re a retirement strategy that can backfire on you. Okay, and it's speaking about backfiring on you, let's look at the next one, a retirement strategy that could backfire on you, and that's uh, 
um, you know, looking at Social Security as a substantial portion of your income. Um, you know, back in the 30s when Social Security was started, it was supposed to be a supplement to uh, your income. And we always talk about the, um, you know, the three-legged approach to the stool, the financial stool, and that is you have uh, Social Security, you have your own finances, which are usually in the form of uh, a 401k or a 403b or something like that. And then you also have a pension. Now, that's what people talked about years ago when it came to the three-legged stool for finances and your retirement planning. Well, unfortunately, we're seeing that you know become a two-legged stool and maybe a one-and-a-half-legged stool, which isn't real sturdy. What, what I mean by that is uh, many pensions are going away. Um, employers found out that it was significantly cheaper to supply 401ks or 403bs where an employee contributes to them rather than a pension where the employer is 100% responsible for funding the account. So we see pensions going away and we also see, you know, social securities in a precarious situation. No matter which side of the fence you're on in believing whether social security will be here or won't be here, you know that it is stressed. We hear about it every time there's an election, um, you know, social security and Medicare. So if you uh, assume that social security is gonna be stressed, there's no reason to completely rely on it, especially if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and even early 50s, you still have time to catch up. Um, again, this is one of those situations where Social Security might, um, you might lose a portion of your benefit as you get older, might not be there at all for some uh, people, um, don't know at what age or if that could happen. So Social Security and counting on that as a, a, a major substantial portion of your income is probably not the best thing to do. We would rather have you take control a little bit more of your own investments. That's where, uh, you know, Tyler said, you know, the 15% rule. Uh, as soon as you start working, we'd love to see you put 15% away. Doesn't all have to be in a, a, a corporate or an employer-sponsored plan. Some of it could be in savings. Some of it could be towards real estate. Try to get 15%. You'll find out as you do start saving 15%, it's significantly easier than to start saving 20, but you need to start that habit. Yeah, good point, sir, Dean. Um, many, we sit often where many workers, they'll neglect uh, their retirement savings because they do plan to fall back on social security instead. But the thing that they don't realize is that social security on its own isn't designed to sustain someone's retirement. It's simply there to supplement what you should have already saved. Um, and there's a little study done, and in a best case scenario, your social security benefit will, it'll replace about 40% of your pre-retirement income, but it's noted that many people need about double that, which is 80%, to pay their bills in retirement and then have some money left over each month for different luxury expenses like vacations, travel, hobbies, different things like that. Um, so again, usually when you go from working, your working years into retirement, you need about 80% of your pre-retirement income to live comfortably, and Social Security provides about half that, 40. So that's not gonna work if you only have Social Security. And ideally, you wanna transition from your working years into retirement and have 100% of your pre-retirement income to live comfortably. Um, and that just shows right there that Social Security alone uh, usually won't do the trick. Um, again, like you mentioned, Dean, there's also talk about cutting benefits in the future, Social Security benefits. So the 40% of Social Security that could replace um, your income could be even less in the future. And there's different um, studies that show sometime in the 2030s, the trust fund could be depleted. You know, who knows? That might be uh, pushed back a few years or bumped up. You just never know. Um, with a lot of our younger clients, we typically don't even model in Social Security for our younger workers. We say um, if you're working, you're younger in your 20s, 30s, maybe even 40s, you want to save like Social Security won't even be there. And if it is, it's simply a cherry on top. Because um, again, I don't want to I don't want to rely on a government program that might not even be there in my retirement. You want to plan without it being there. And again, if it is there, um, all the better. Now, instead of relying on Social Security to fund most or all of your retirement like some people do, you wanna make it a priority to save within your workplace retirement plan. If you're working right now, there's many companies that do have retirement plans available. And if they don't, you still have the opportunity to go outside of those and fund an IRA or a Roth account. Um, so again, don't, don't rely on a government program that can't sustain itself to try and sustain your retirement. You wanna take that on your own shoulders and do that. 
and many people do have that opportunity. Like I said, if you're working right now, chances are likely you do have a 401k at work that you can contribute to. And right now here in 2019, with your 401k, 403b retirement savings plan, um, you can contribute up to $19,000 per year, which is a, a really big number. So many people, you know, you shouldn't have excuses that you don't have that option because you do. And that number actually bumps up to $25,000 per year if you're 50 or older. So the IRS, they are lenient as you get older where they do give you that catch-up contribution where if you haven't saved en enough or if you have and you do want to save more, you can bump it up from 19000 up to 25000 at 50 or older as long as you're still working. So that's a big chunk that you can put into um, an employer-sponsored retirement plan. Now, in addition to that, you can also contribute up to $6,000 to an IRA or a Roth IRA, and that number bumps up to $7,000 if you're 50 or older. So again, the IRS does give you another $1,000 catch-up contribution from $6,000 to $7,000 if you're 50 or older. Um, so that way you can take advantage of those various retirement accounts that you have available while you're at work and that way you don't rely on social security and again i touched on it before but i'll touch on it again um, if you can work your way up to 15 percent of your household income into retirement accounts that's going to be where you want to start and if you can start that the earlier the better um, again within your employer sponsored plan you want to contribute at least up to the match if they do offer a match if they don't, you can go right into a Roth IRA because that's tax-free and then contribute into there. And then if you're still not at 15%, then go back into your 401k and contribute to that. So again, um, Social Security in itself definitely won't work for many people. You're also going to want to take it on your shoulders, save for retirement. One other thing is that um, many people even consider getting a part-time job in retirement to help replace some income as well, which is another thing too that can help because if you do get a part-time job the first five, 10 years of retirement, then you don't have to withdraw as much from your retirement funds and that could extend them as well. So that's another thing. If you don't think you've saved enough or if you want to preserve more of what you have saved in your retirement accounts, then consider getting a part-time job because that won't put as much strain on your investments over the long term. Um, but again, take it on your own shoulders. You do want to save in either an employer-sponsored plan, an IRA, or a Roth IRA, because Social Security alone, counting on that for a substantial portion of income in retirement, is usually a mistake. Okay, before we continue, we're gonna take a quick break. You're listening to Dean and Tyler Listel, investment advisors with Secure Retirement Solutions located on Allied Street in Green Bay. For a complimentary review of your current investments, or if you have questions, please call them at 920-347-9888 or go to their website at srsplans.com. Okay, the next uh, retirement strategy that could backfire on you uh, that we were talking about and that uh, our, our, we see quite often and was in this article is, you know, when it comes down to relocating somewhere cheaper, whether it's a different part of the country or actually selling your existing home or where you're living and getting something cheaper. And one of the mistakes we see with that is we'll hear people, uh, they'll, they'll tell us all the time that what they plan on doing in retirement is they're going to sell their house and then they're going to look at that money uh, to invest and, and live off it in their retirement. But one thing they tend to forget is, where are you going to live? I mean, you still need money to live someplace. So many times selling a house and going into either a condo or um, an apartment, many times is not your cheapest option. It's not your best option. Because first of all, once you sell that house and do that, of course, you have nothing that's a, a, an appreciable asset at that particular time. A house is still an asset that can be sold in an emergency or if you do get to that stage of your life where you want to uh, downsize. So, for instance, in a conversation like that, we'll have with a client, and that is, okay, if you've got a mortgage, how much is your mortgage right now? So if they're carrying a mortgage in retirement, which most times we would like to see paid off before retirement, but if they do carry a mortgage, let's say it's $750, $800, which is, uh, for most people, a pretty affordable mortgage. So we'll ask them, okay, you're paying $750 or $800, and your mortgage only lasts two or three more years, where are you going to find um, some place to live for $750 or $800? For some people, they can. Other people, it's not going to work. So really, a better opportunity is 
Um, if you have the possibility that you have a home with a paid off mortgage and you want to downsize, that's a better opportunity. So if you have a three hundred or four hundred thousand dollar home and all the kids are gone and you have multiple rooms and you want to downsize and get a home for maybe a hundred fifty or two hundred thousand dollars, that's better. Then you can still pay off the downsize home one hundred percent and then you still have a couple hundred thousand dollars that you can use towards your retirement income. So we would rather see something like that. Also, you have the ability then, because you've, uh, again, brought in uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars through the downsizing process, where you can go and create your own sort of condominium in that you can hire somebody professionally to come in and take care of the lawn. You can hire somebody professionally to come in and take care of snow removal. So what you've done is you've downsized you still don't have a mortgage and you have some money left over to take care of maintenance. So many times your home is the best place to be. Not everybody, but many times it is, especially if you're still safe and able to get around. But then there's also opportunities of moving to cheaper parts of the country. And we always forewarn people, it sounds good if you move to a state that doesn't have income tax, but where else do they get you with taxes? Is the sales tax more expensive? or there's certain other drawbacks there. Tyler, what are some of the things that we hear and look at when people make the mistake of thinking they can just relocate somewhere cheaper in retirement? Yeah, when it comes to relocating somewhere cheaper, this one isn't talked about as much, uh, but many seniors, they decide to move to parts of the country where their cost of living is lower when they do retire, which in theory, it makes perfect sense because those parts of the country, they might have cheaper rent. Um, as you said, Dean, low or no state income taxes, low cost amenities, different things like that. So in theory, it makes sense to do that. Uh, but the only problem with this strategy is that it usually doesn't go as smoothly as, as they had planned. Um, first off, as you mentioned, Dean, many people have a harder time selling their house than they had anticipated. We see it often where, you know, they have this plan all laid out. They think they can sell their house right away and go and do it in the matter of, you know, a few months. And it usually doesn't work that way. Um, so the first thing is, if you do that, you are at the mercy of the, the housing market if you have that plan, because if you don't sell your house as soon as you anticipated, that can really delay that whole plan of relocating. Um, others, unfortunately, they encounter health issues that force them to, to, to stay put um, in order to be closer to family members who can help out. That's another thing too, whereas obviously as you get older, as you age throughout retirement, your health is going to wear down as well. And that's something where you could have this whole plan to relocate but then if, uh, if you run into health issues, that might not happen anymore. So um, there's, there's actually people where they don't save as much as they know they should because they plan on relocating cheaper and it could completely backfire again if they can't sell their house or if they run into health issues where they can't do it, then they're stuck living somewhere that isn't as cheap. And there's nothing wrong with planning to relocate in retirement but you do always wanna have a backup plan for managing your income in case it doesn't pan out. Like have a plan to work part-time for 15 hours a week, maybe just, just to make up that monetary difference if the move doesn't work out. Um, or work part-time and try and aim to get a certain amount of income, an extra you know, five, 10, $15,000 to help supplement your social security and your retirement funds. So you do always wanna have that plan um, just in case things don't work out. But ultimately, it's very important to develop a retirement plan rather than just winging it because um, the sooner you develop that retirement plan, the more better you're going to feel, the more prepared you're going to feel in retirement if you do have that plan. So um, when it comes to relocating somewhere cheaper, that is a retirement strategy that can backfire, but you do want to have a plan and you'll be okay with that. Um, and then I do, Dean, I do have one more here that I want to add just before we close out the show. This one wasn't in the Motley Fool article, but while we're talking about retirement strategies that can backfire, one that I've seen a lot lately with um, a lot of people that we've met with is not planning for taxes in retirement. And what happens is people retire, go through the financial plan, and they've accumulated um, a good chunk of money within their 401k or their traditional IRA and they don't realize that when they start taking that money out, every penny of it is fully taxable. So if you have, um, you know, just for example, $100,000 in an IRA or a 401k, and you're gonna be in the 22% tax bracket in retirement, well then 22, th over the, when you withdraw that money, if you stay in that tax bracket, really $22,000 of that $100,000 
is going to be sent directly to the IRS in the form of taxes. So not planning for taxes, if you have different IRAs, 401ks, you want to be able to plan for that and just know that that's going to be fully taxable when you retire. And one way that you can get around that tax burden is by either funding Roth accounts or contributing to a Roth 401k or a Roth 403b if your company offers it. Because again, Roth accounts, that's where you pay the, the taxes up front. Then any money that you put in there grows completely tax-free. Then you can withdraw from that tax-free in retirement. So you do want to contribute to the Roth 401ks. The other thing you can do um, is if you have different types of pre-tax positions like a 403b, a traditional IRA, a 401k, you can do something called the Roth conversion where you pay the taxes on it now while you're either younger or still working and then it converts into a Roth account and it grows tax-free thereafter. So that way down the road when you are in retirement, you don't have to pay any taxes on it anymore um, throughout your retirement years, which is the whole goal. So again, um, not planning for taxes, that's another big one, whether it comes to not withdrawing the money correctly or not being tax diversified. Tax diversified is where you have different pre-tax positions and Roth after-tax positions. Ideally, we'd like to see you have um, as much as you can in after-tax money, just because that's gonna lessen your tax burden in retirement, but that's usually not, um, not the case with many people, just because through your employer, some only offer pre-tax positions, so if that's the case, fund a Roth IRA outside of your employer. Um, you always wanna plan for taxes, and just know when you're contributing to your retirement accounts, know which ones are considered pre-tax, know which ones are considered after-tax, have a plan for them in terms of withdrawing in retirement, and you'll be okay. Okay, that's all the time we have this week. See you later, and hope you'll join us again next week. See you next week. You've been listening to Secure Retirement Solutions with your hosts, Dean and Tyler Listel, fully licensed retirement specials from Secure Retirement Solutions in Green Bay. To get more information from Dean and Tyler, contact them at Secure Retirement Solutions on Allied Street in Green Bay. Call 920-347-9888 or visit them at srsplans.com. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Brokers International Financial Services, LLC. Member SIPC. Brokers International Financial Services is not an affiliated company.